So an unforgettable moment on the campaign trail for one voter who got a big hug from Trump at an Atlanta Chick-fil-A uh, while he met with supporters. Watch. Okay, what the media tells you, Mr. Trump, we support you. Uh, we support you. Okay, 4 p.m. We've been 4 p.m. Come here, let me give you a hug. Please do. <laughs> Look at the joy. Here to tell us about it is that young woman herself, Michaela Montgomery. She's also the founder of a grassroots political group to conserve the culture. Uh, Michaela, I've been waiting for this interview all morning. So when I've been waiting for this my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> that, so thanks so much for joining us. So you told the president when you were hugging him, I don't care what the media says, we support you. Tell me what you meant by that. I am so glad that is the first question you asked me. Mm -hmm. So, um, of course, in the excitement of everything, I wasn't able to really relay my message, yeah. but um, the general consensus or social media would have you thinking that if President Trump were to show up to the HBCU campuses or walk around the ABC community, that like some angry mob would form or a riot would ensue and that he would not be welcomed. And clearly the sentiment in that room the other day was the complete opposite. He was very welcome. People were excited to see him. People showed up in support of him. And people, um, of course, were from all four institutions within the AUC, um, the local HBCU community in Atlanta. And they all showed up in support of them. So it's actually kind of crazy to see people in an uproar when all four institutions were legitimately represented and all four institutions were represented by said students who wanted to support President Trump. You know, Michaela. And I really appreciate that we were able to not only let him know that regardless of what social media says, you know, I know they're trying to make us think we're supposed to hate you, but we don't. And additionally, it was a learning experience for my students because they were able to see and experience firsthand how the media can warp the perception of an opinion or a person. Because, like I said, to think that these students who attend these illustrious institutions aren't smart enough to make their own decisions, That's so right. much so that they would only show support for Trump because he bought chicken sandwiches and milkshakes. It's offensive. That in itself is the most disturbing part of it all, especially when you think about the fact that it was mainly urban media outlets that were doing everything in their power to turn other black people against these young black kids who simply were not shy to explore other options. It's so incredible, and I think you hit it on the head. By the way, the president, the former president, gave a lot of funding to HBCUs. Um, mm -hmm. One of the highlights of my childhood was my HBCU tour to, to figure out what college I wanted to go to. But tell me about the former president and his policies. What is it about him that is gravitating these young people toward the president? And a lot of people, traditionally Republicans, don't do well in black America. But a lot of young black Americans like the former president. What is it about him? I think, and this is a sentiment I get a lot coming from the young people themselves, yeah. is that they feel like he's honest. They feel like this is somebody who, while we might not agree with how he says things, how he goes about things, at least he's telling us what it is. We don't feel like this is a snake in the grass waiting for his chance to bite us. This is somebody who's telling us, this is what my plan is. Here's how I plan to execute it. Here's the people involved. And here's how you can get involved. Um, so they just feel like he's more relatable. And I don't say that to say that, like, you know, they all relate to him. But again, he gives you that relatable feeling to where it's like, hey, I'm just like you. You know me. This is what I this is what you said you wanted. Here's what I'm going to try to do about it. They really feel like this is somebody who's talking to them and not just saying what they want to hear. Such a good point. Michaela, what has Biden done for our community? What has he done for black America? Um, well, he locked up a lot of people that look like me, mm -hmm. and they're still sitting in jail waiting for, you know, justice and appeal of some sort. Um, so when it comes to what Joe Biden has done for black America, if we look specifically at his record as a senator, it wasn't, it wasn't something that benefited us at all. If anything, one could argue that he dedicated his entire senatorial career 
to disrupting the way of life, you know, for black people. He didn't want black kids going to the same school as his kids. He didn't want black people walking on the sidewalk along with his mother and grandmother. So the fact that we ignore these things that were said on the Senate floor, like this is somebody who passed legislation with the sole intent of oppressing a certain community. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna act like that didn't happen or we're gonna act like it can be overshadowed by somebody's comments a few years down the line that made us feel some type of way. Feeling some type of way is completely different when you can feel a certain type of way at home. There's people who are, you know, as of right now, spending the rest of their lives in jail because, you know, Joe Biden thought that they deserved it, That's as true. if there isn't retribution. And then you had somebody like Trump come in and give us the First Step Act to try and right the wrongs that were done with this three strikes rule, and Ma nobody's talking about that. Michaela, I need more time with you. Uh, we got to go to a... <laughs> you can call me whenever. We'll make it happen. We'll bring you back on, and we'll talk about the president's plan to win more black voters. Michaela, thank you so much. Thanks for being bold. We'll talk soon. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.